Welcome to the Man Child Chronicles podcast, where four friends talk entertainment, fatherhood, and sports, all with sarcasm, comedic timing, and a healthy dose of toxic masculinity. Let's welcome our hosts, Ryan, John, Mike, and Jay. Growing up never took so long. Hey, welcome in cronies of the Man Child Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, here with my three best friends, John, Mike, and Jay. Tonight, we're going to do a spelling bee, and we're going to do a hangover draft. And don't forget to subscribe to us on our YouTube page. Hit the bell and give us a like. Let's get into some Weekly Mustard. The Weekly Mustard! Stories that make life tangy. And I want to grind. I got some grinds to gear here. This week, some some what? Grind some those gears, grinds Brian. to grind gear. Some grind some gears. Yep, <laughs> gears to grind. Gosh dang it! <laughs> <laughs> That's how upset I am about it. Words. So, so, two weeks ago, I make a schedule for my work, and my wife wants mm. to go take the kids. They're going to go to visit her parents in Alabama for a couple weeks and her dates have been all over the place. So I said, you got to nail this down. I'm doing the schedule. I know this is around the time you want to go. So she said, okay, I'm going to leave on this date. I said, okay, I'm going to get the schedule done. And then, uh, come Monday, she's like, Oh, it's changing now. My mom's coming here and we're going to drive down together. So we're going to go the next week. Oh, are you sure? Yes. So I changed Go in there. I had to change the whole schedule around back. Mm -hmm. And then a day later, never mind. My mom can't come down. Now she has a dentist appointment. So now we're going to go down this week. Are you sure? Yes. Because every time I do this, I got to talk to like five people and ask them to change their schedules for me to go back. Yes, I'm positive. So I change it back. The next day, her sister says... I'm coming down on Friday, and then we'll go down there Sunday, (laughs) this Sunday. And I'm like, so you're going to be down there for what, like two and a half weeks? Yeah. So now I got to change my whole schedule again? Yeah. And I got to tell everybody, hey, guess what? Starting Sunday, your guys' schedule is going to change. Yep. So then I had to change the schedule all over again. But the plus side is- four, right? Four times I had to change it, yes. Four times in a week I had to change schedules. Uh, the plus side is, though, I get to be batching it for two and a half weeks, get to catch up on some shows, <laughs> uh, some movies I want to watch. The Witcher came out. I get to watch that new season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just started, uh, I just watched the first two episodes today of Eastbound and Down. Eastbound Fantastic Down. so far. <laughs> so I'm going to watch that. So I'm excited. And I get to eat terrible food. Uh, have the wife mind me mm. some uh, Red Baron pizzas, chicken nuggets, mac and cheese, and hot dogs for my two and a half weeks Ugh. to eat. <laughs> I think That's she's leaving. Long... I think she's leaving you. I don't think she's going yeah. on vacation. <laughs> I think she's leaving you. Did she say anything about <laughs> cigarettes or milk? <laughs> no, no. She she's didn't. going to Greenbow, Alabama. And she's leaving you, man. Well, it's difficult oh, for me because I live like twenty minutes away from home where I work. So I got to take an over an hour lunch break to come home and let my dogs out in the middle of the day, which adds uh, a lot more time to my week of work. So I got to throw, mm-hmm. and I don't get my day off in there. I got to throw an extra day of work in there now because I got to take all these lunch, big long lunch breaks. That's terrible. Yep, That's terrible. Is. That was a, uh, <clears throat> some of yours was a good segue into mine. My mustard this week is I consumed some new uh, entertainment that, I thought I'd share about, um, watch two things this week that are noteworthy. The first one, um, I checked out, I think it was last night. Um, the movie, the, the Pope's exorcist. And, um, I'm not usually one for, uh, exorcist movies or possession movies or whatever. To me, they're always kind of like torture porn where they're, (laughs) where they're just like super graphic and just really twisted for no reason. But, this movie was actually really cool. First of all, Russell Crowe is awesome in this role. He's playing like this Italian uh, Catholic priest or whatever. He nails, nails the accent. 
he's super funny in the movie. He actually tells quite a few jokes and he's really funny. But this movie is literally like national treasure meets paranormal movie. Like even though there is some possession stuff and the whole deal like that would be in a movie like that, there's this whole storyline behind it where they go on an adventure and do all this crazy stuff. And I really enjoyed it. Um, so for those of you who have seen something like The Conjuring, where on the uh, the exorcist content, you know, that's pretty tame. It's more of a thriller than it is a horror movie. Um, I would say The Pope's Exorcist is right in the middle. It does have some of the visuals and some of the creepy of uh, a possession movie, but not nearly as intense or graphic as uh, as a lot of the other ones that have come out over time. So uh, that just came out on streaming. It's available. Go check it out. Uh, we watched it on Amazon Prime, uh, paid two or three bucks to rent it in Ultra HD. Um, so there's that. And then the one that I really wanted to talk about was on Apple Plus. We randomly jumped into this show called The Silo. And I'm not usually one to jump into shows that uh, I don't know a whole lot about. Is that about farming? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just where corn comes from, the whole deal. But uh, no, it's a really cool premise. Uh, These people are in what appears to be a post-apocalyptic future. They've been living in this huge underground, uh, you think like a missile silo, but it was actually built with the intention for people to live in it. It's like 120, 130 stories deep into the ground. And... uh, and so, really cool premise. Got some a few bigger names in it, um, but I can't really talk a whole lot about it because the story moves quick enough. But the whole premise about it is, uh, if you do anything wrong or you get caught thieving or whatever, breaking rules, they'll send you outside, and it's essentially like a death sentence or whatever. And, and they show that in the preview. But uh, this was a trilogy of books, and uh, first of all, very. Uh, relatively clean show. I'm not saying watch it with little kids, but very little language, no sexual content, no nothing, but a really great deep story um, that I would encourage you guys to check out. So if you're into like post-apocalyptic mystery thriller type stuff, the silo on Apple plus uh, is definitely something you want to check out. Me and my wife have really enjoyed it. We thought there was more of it than it, than there was. It's actually a fairly new show. They're still in the first season. Um, so we got caught up like in two days. It was like eight episodes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's what I did with my week. And um, that's my mustard. Mm. Is there is there zombies in this post, post-apocalyptic world? Zombies? There's not. At least not yet. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> At Terrible. least not yet. At least not yet, John. If you need that, you can go to one of the seven different Walking Dead TV shows they have now. <laughs> All right, so jumping into my mustard for the week. Last week, I was uh, the worst husband uh, of the year award. I won that one. Um, I feel like for this one, I am now going to be considered worst dad of the year. Uh I always have these stories about how much I suck, but that's okay. So I know you guys have uh, can relate to the wife wanting to uh, buy things. You have to put it together. Um, we're redoing the boys room. And so we bought quad bunks, not Mm. just a bunk bed, but a quad bunk bed. Wow. So it's like mega bed. Um, it was my own fault for getting hooked on mega bed sofa on top of the sofa. Uh, and so I, when we bought it, I looked it up and I mean, the average time to put this thing together, they said was like four hours. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I get home from work. It's 6 p.m. I'm like, where's everyone at? I go walking down the hallway. I opened the bedroom into the boys' room, and there's my wife. She just, the the things had just come in, so she's got pieces laying all over the oh. room. She hasn't even started yet. She's like, yay, you're here. You can help me. And I'm just like, oh, yay. my God. <laughs> why are we doing this right now why are we doing this and did I'm like, you like pull fine. out a cigarette and go my god, oh, my <laughs> oh, god. No. so i'm like all right let's go let's just start effing doing this so 
we start getting all the pieces together we start getting it separated i'm reading the instructions you know like i'm trying to figure out how to cure cancer like i'm really really diving into this uh so i can understand it anyways we're about 20 minutes in i'm on the ground sitting um and i'm trying to get some of the screws apart my wife has built an arch this one arch weighs about 80 pounds and she sets it up against the wall and then she turns around and it comes falling down crashing into my foot and i mean my foot was so swollen the half of my foot is black i mean so this thing just comes crashing down into my foot and i just immediately i'm like fudge because i'm looking over and i see uh only you didn't say fudge (laughs) i did i see channing and deacon right there so i'm trying not to cuss so i'm just literally going fudge fudge and they're everyone's just staring at me oh i was so mad i'm like it's fine let's just keep going so then we're going it's about an hour and a half later we're still working through this thing at this point i mean my foot is still throbbing uh we're trying to pick up some bars and uh one of the pieces off the box and my wife grabs grabs something and then on my other foot she slams this metal rod into my other foot and i'm just like oh my gosh like is this misery with kathy bates are you just trying to kill me like what's the plan here I, I don't understand. People are always threatening OSHA, and they're nowhere oh. to be seen. <laughs> so at this point, we we get done. It took us three hours. It's 9 p.m., but we're done. We finally got it done. But I'm exhausted. I haven't eaten any food. I worked all day. I came home. I built this. At this point, I'm shaky. You know that shaky yeah. feeling? I, got my, I just have low blood sugar. I, I grab a, my diet diet Pepsi, great sponsor, thank you. I grab my diet Pepsi, I sit at the kitchen table, and I'm just trying to relax. I'm sipping my Pepsi. Is there sugar in that? Sponsors. And, then all of a, and then all of a sudden, my daughter comes running down the hallway, and she's screaming. Dad, Dad, Mom needs you right now. Oh, my gosh, Dad. Brennan's Mom needs dead. you right now. Brennan's dead. Like, the bunk she, beds were a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's going through my head. I'm fr- I'm freaking out. I jump up, panic throughout my body, adrenaline. I go r- barreling down the hallway. I fling the door open, and Bo is sitting in the top bunk. Kate's just laying there, and she's like, "Hey, we got the bed. We got the beds in." And I'm like, what What are you talking about? Like, Audrey was panicking. I turn around and Audrey's just snickering. She's just laughing. And I'm like, Audrey, that's not funny. You just scared the daylights out of me. Like, I am in no mood. It's and she's funny. still laughing. And I'm literally filled with so much rage and panic. And I punched her in the face. (laughs) No, I I wanted to. She's still laughing. Now I only have four kids. (laughs) I literally, I punch punch a door because I'm so mad and she won't stop laughing. I punch a door and I'm like, I'm not kidding. That's not funny. Like, I'm so mad right now. All of a sudden, she's like, oh, oh no. She realizes Papa Bear's mad. And so I, I literally just storm past her. I'm still so filled with this panic and adrenaline and rage. You I storm past door. her. I, no, I go into the bathroom. I slam the bathroom door. I sit on the toilet to poop. And I just start crying while I poop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poop crying, guys. <laughs> As I'm sitting there. And I'm just I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I so angry today? Like, <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? I just wanted, How I just did I get wanted, here? I just monster. wanted to enjoy my diet Pepsi. So I cleaned myself up, you know. Um, <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. From my tears and my poop, I cleaned myself up. Hopefully you and then the same, I have uh, to tissue go. Paper. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Now I have pink eye. Oh. Pretty damn. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I realize I have totally failed as a dad. I have to go hug Audrey, tell her I'm really sorry, hug the hug the kids, hug the wife, tell everyone I'm going to bed. Like it's like 10, 10 p.m. at this point. I still haven't eaten anything. I don't care. I'm just tired and I'm going to bed. So that, guys, is just a typical Wednesday night at the Guild. You uh, I think you need to go to therapy over that. You seem to get angry really quickly there. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. <laughs> hey, I'm just, just being real. I'm just being real. I been, know I have problems. John, have you been calling his daughter and giving her tips on things? I Sounds will like now for jokes. sure because if there's <laughs> anybody who knows how to push Jay's button, it is his brother John. And I will be calling her and texting her and alerting her how to push his buttons. So yeah. give me a call, Audrey. Yeah. Uh my I don't, weekly I don't know if I can I don't know if I can remember the last time I had a poop cry. Um I, I've never had I, a poop cry. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, I'm normally very excited when I have a poop. I don't want to cry during yeah. it. Uh, I guess my weekly mustard is the Canadian wildfires that are going on has created poor air quality here where I'm at in Baraboo, Wisconsin. So I never knew this existed, but apparently there's a air quality radar or index you can look up when you have bad air quality, and it goes from green, yellow, orange, red, purple, and then... Uh, like a maroon color so if it's in the maroon color that's danger alert if it's in the purple that's very unhealthy and all week where i've been at in baraboo it's been in the purple all week very unhealthy weather so just smoke in the airs all day long very thick dense smog type of smoke (laughs) i don't know if you guys have ever been to like san diego or la you'll see a thin layer of smog in the distance wherever you look in the distance somewhere you always see a thin layer of smog out there and so I was like, wow, I wonder what that quality of weather is like. And there, when I looked them up, and they're in the green right now in their weather level. And here in Wisconsin, we've been in the purple because of all the Canadian wildfires. So it's just something I've never had to experience in my life or deal with. So I'm just like, kind of like, huh, first COVID, now I got poor ear quality. What's going to happen next? Like, <laughs> what wheel are Lung we cancer. spinning and where's it <laughs> that, going to go on the dial? Next. <laughs> So wow. everything got canceled in that's Wisconsin, crazy. Suns T-ball, all that jazz. So too bad. Hmm. Because of air quality, huh? Because of air quality. Interesting. I thought Interesting. those N95 masks were supposed to just like cover everything. We can't just Well, you know, we burned the N- them all. <laughs> we burned them all at the end of COVID. We all went out there, we burned our mask, and now we need them again. It's funny. Well, air quality's down, but the quality of our commercial breaks are not. We'll be right back. What if I told you that you could support the Manchild Chronicles while also getting some amazing benefits and perks? Well, guess what? That's actually a thing. The Manchild Chronicles is on Patreon, and there are some great benefits when you subscribe. Would you like to know how to sign up? It's easy. Just head over to manchildchronicles.com and follow the links to our Patreon. All right, we're back. Let's play a little Manchild Spelling Bee. It's time for the Manchild Spelling Bee, where we spell words good. Here's how it's going to go. I came up with some words for my three best friends here, starting at a first grade level, and we are going until there's nobody left. So hopefully you guys aren't smarter than a 10th grader. Cause that's about so if you misspell one word, you misspell one word, you're out. You're out. I am terrible at spelling. I will be amazed if I make it past one word. I'm gonna. Nah, I'm gonna not allow. Well, they're pretty easy right away. It's first grade level. So. I'm, it better be like cat or hat or bat. <laughs> so something with an so, at the end. So <laughs> asking, uh, uh, I assume that if you get it wrong before you're out, the other or somebody else has to spell it correctly, right? No. Each of you get a different word. Oh, okay. Each of you get a different word. So, uh, cool. Start with John. First grade, John. Here we go. Come on. 
your word. Pillows. Pillows? Pillows. I Can put you use pillows. That as a sentence? I, I put pillows on my bed. <laughs> what is the origin of the word? <laughs> Did he say the origin? I didn't hear it. (laughs) Pillows. Pillows. It's Latin for pillows. Pillows. And what what was the sentence again? (laughs) This is going to be the longest segment in history I can already tell. It's going to be so long. Pillows. P. I. L. L. O W S Pellows. That is correct. <sighs> yes. Good job, John. I won. Good Mike. Job, John. Michael. Oh. Your word is alarm. Alarm. Can you use it in a sentence, please? <laughs> I need an alarm to wake me up. <laughs> What's the origin? What is the origin of the word? <laughs> Alarm is Latin for alarm. Oh, okay, great. A-L-A-R-M. Alarm. That is is correct. J. Good job. Your word is tiptoe. Tiptoe. Are you sure that's not two words? Uh, When I looked up first grade words, this was one word. Tiptoe. Tiptoe, tiptoe. Um, and what is the origin of that word? <laughs> <laughs> tiptoe is Latin for tiptoe. Perfect. Um, let's go with a sentence, please. Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> when I sneak around, I need to tiptoe. Hmm. Now, now it's tracking. Tiptoe. uh, T-I-P-T-O-E. That is correct. (laughs) We're moving on to second grade. John, your second grade word is rainbow. 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 Can you use that in a sentence? Dude, you got to spell the word. (laughs) Spell the word, man. (laughs) Butterflies in the sky. (laughs) I can see twice as high. Just take a look and read a book. It's the reading rainbow. I can do anything. Rainbow. R-A-I-N-B-O-W. Rainbow. That is correct. (laughs) Michael, your word is... Sense. Sense. That one I actually do need uh, in a <laughs> sentence because there's two different <laughs> versions of that word. The cashier gave you my change back of 25 cents. Oh, C E N T S. Sense. That is correct. J, your word is report. Hmm. Please use it in a sentence for me. I need to report you to the authorities. Perfect. Uh, Report. R-E-P-O-R-T. That is correct. We're moving on to third grade. Oh, man. I think I failed the third grade spelling. (laughs) John, your word is passport. Oh, I'm out. Passport. P A. S S P O R T. That is correct. Mm. Michael, your word is holiday. Mm. Holiday. That is H O L I D A Y. Holiday is correct. I thought I might get somebody on that one. A lot of times people use two L's in that. J. Mm. Your word is. Airplane. Airplane. 
uh, airplane. That is A I R P L A N E. That is correct. I had a brief moment. I thought it was airport, and I was like, oh, God, Jay, no! <laughs> 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 I was like, what happened? <laughs> no! All right. Fourth grade. Now it's getting tough. Oh, folks. my gosh. My Ugh. third grade teacher could see me now. <laughs> John, your word is measuring. Measuring. What the? Measuring. M. E. A. S U R I N G. That is correct. Nice. Oh, nice. I think nice. I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, your word is wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Are you sure about that? Saying, you saying that word right? Ryan? <laughs> you sure about that? You sure about that? This one I may actually get wrong, so we're going to see. W H E E L B A R R O W. That is correct. (laughs) Jay, your word is agriculture. Agriculture. Oh, that's that's dirty. (laughs) Um, agriculture. A G R I C U L T U R E agriculture. That is correct. Wow. wow. Well, I thought I was gonna get somebody that round for sure. We're going to fifth grade. Going to fifth grade. Just count me out. Back to school. <laughs> John, <laughs> your word is approximate. Approximate. Oh man. Approximate. Yeah, I'm out. You can do it. Just sound it out, John. Just sound it out. Approximate. (laughs) Approximate. I promise, Daddy, I'm trying my best. (laughs) Uh, Let's go with... uh, I'm going to be out. A P P R O X I. M A T E. That is correct. Ah! I nice. knew you had it. I knew you had it once you had the double P there. Michael, your word yeah. is exclamation. Exclamation. Use it in a sentence because those are, you said two different words there. <laughs> At the end of my sentence, there is an exclamation point. Uh, okay. E X C L I M A T I O N. That is incorrect. Oh, what did I get wrong? E X C L A M A T I O N. I I looked at it because uh, when I get my word, I I type it out here because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I actually am dys- dyslexic. But for some reason, the A didn't look right. But Michael so is el- check now. If get for gets you, cheater. All right, Michael's eliminated. You are out, Jay. <coughs> to stay in the game and to move to Jay. sixth grade with John, just lose it. Your word me, is Jay. just lose it for me. Parent- your word is parentheses. Ooh. Parentheses. You made me poop myself. Why does he get all the hard words? <laughs> Why do you got to bring that up, John? Because you made me All poop right. myself, and you pushed me into a frozen lake. The least you can do is let me win the man-child spelling bee. Parentheses. Oh, you son of a gun. P-A-R-E-N-T-H-E-S-E-S. Parentheses. That is correct. John and Jay are going to sixth grade. Why would you do this? John. Your word is encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. Oh, shoot. 
do love the encyclopedia. I'm out. E N C Y C L E P O D I A. That is incorrect. It is E N C Y C L O P E D I A. You literally swapped your letters. I think if you would have wrote it down, you would have had it. All right, Jay. This is for the win. Otherwise, we go another round. Oh. Your word is remarkable. Oh, come on. Oh, that's easy. Oh, poor John. You give him all the easy ones. (laughs) Remarkable. R E M A R K A B L E. That is correct. Come on. Jay, you won. The man child spelling bee. You are the smartest man alive. <laughs> and I feel it today. I feel it. Thank dare you. dare we say remarkable? H-A-K. All right. We'll be stick around. We'll be right back. All right, cronies, we are back. It's draft time. It's draft time. That's right, it's draft time. Here's how it works. Each player will get four picks to create the best lineup for today's topic. Once the teams are selected, the man-child universe gets to decide which person takes the win. Tonight's draft... We're doing the hangover draft, or as John and Jay like to call it, the boy dance party. <laughs> it's a boy dance party. It's a boy dance party. It's a boy dance party. Uh, we are drafting. We are drafting four celebrities to hang with in Vegas for the weekend. Four celebrities in tonight's draft order: Ryan, Jay, John, and Mike. Ryan, oh. J. John, and Mike. And you get the number one pick, huh? Weird. Number Weird. one. Isn't that funny? Oh, I got the number one pick. Weird. Weird. And with my number one pick, there's some, I got a list here, and it is, I love my list. But with my number one pick, I'm going with the legend himself, Bill Murray. Oh, I thought you were going to say Bill Cosby. <laughs> I thought he was going to say Bill Cosby. I was so worried. I was like, oh, oh no. Man. This the weekend man. has changed. The whole you weekend. You see what you do now is you sneak up to them and you put the little bloop in their drink. <laughs> and then before you know it, you got a fudgy pop, 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 scooby dee dop. You got to offer them the pudding pop. The flicks them, the flas them, the flus and flizzums. Yikes. <laughs> wow. To clarify, Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. <laughs> the legend. Now, Ryan. Garfield think, himself. <laughs> do you think Bill can still hang? Can oh, he yeah. still party it up? Dude, old guys are the best to hang with. They don't care at all. They just want to have a good time. And yes, I think Bill Murray would be awesome to hang with still. Okay. <laughs> I was just asking. Uh, since I'm going number two, um, I'm going to take who I thought was the 101 who I would love to hang out with, and that's going to be Mr. Adam Sandler. It's a good pick. Tell, tell us why. Tell us why, Jay. Yeah. Why, Adam? I'm a huge fan of Adam Sandler. You know it's just going to be a fun time. The guy is a riot. He's a hoot. Um, yeah. Love Adam Sandler. Great I think da- I think Daniel Baker disagrees, but 
<laughs> Daniel Baker's on. Shout this out period. Daniel Baker. <laughs> Shout out Mr. Daniel Baker. All right, there is a clear 101 that got skipped over here. And if you're going to party, especially if you're going to Vegas, you want a guy who's freshly single, a lot of money, a lot of rings on his fingers. We're taking Mr. Tom Brady, number one. <laughs> Welcome to my party. I didn't make All my right. list, interestingly. I am not surprised by your pick, John. I have approached my list tonight as if I am going to tear this town up and I want some of the most colorful characters to to end up in the overnight cell with me. Did you just All say right. Saddam Hussein? I did not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, the clear... The clear 101 for this draft is none other than Matt Damon. And I am taking Matt Damon as my number one go-to guy. Next, Michael, I would be disappointed if you didn't take Damon I know, 101. I know. Now, Michael, good. Michael, you you cannot take any other Matt Damon characters. You can't be like Mark Watney, blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Dude from I'm Downsizing. Aware. You have Matt I Damon. I almost planned that. I you almost planned that, that, but I didn't. <clears throat> okay. Oh, my um, God. It's Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Matt Damon is my right-hand guy, okay? He's the guy that that he's my wisdom guy. I go to him when I have questions. He's the guy that's keeping the other three, you know, guys in balance. Okay. My next guy is the eccentric guy. He's not your crazy guy. He's your eccentric weird guy. That's going to do weird things at weird times. I'm taking none other than Nicholas Cage. Oh (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I thought about Nicholas Cage, but I thought, I bet, I bet he is just a pompous butthole. In person, <laughs> so I didn't want to do well, big words. Well, you just blew any shot of him coming onto the show, Ryan. Thanks. <laughs> Love to have you on, Nick. I'm Listen, joking. if we're in Vegas, if we're in Vegas, and I'm with Tom Brady, you know, neither of us will be the life of the party. Dad, we gotta take Dad, the life. I want to steal the Declaration now. of Independence, <laughs> John Voigt. So I'm going to take. John Voigt, you Mr. Said Rob great, Gronkowski right? now. Welcome to oh, my weekend, God. Rob. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible weekend already. Me Patriots. and the Gronk and Tom Brady. I don't think you can keep up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> oh, is it back to me? It is back to you. All right. So I'm already having fun with Adam Sandler. We're partying it up. And is Jake so, going to pick the whole cast from Grown Ups? <laughs> oh, man. You just that changed would, my whole draft. That would be pretty good. <laughs> you just changed my whole draft. Oh, no, I'm not going to roll that way. Man, that's a good idea. Uh, next on my list, I'm taking another another funny man, uh, Mr. Will Ferrell. Hmm. Oh, he was on my list. All right, my second pick. I'm taking another legend. He loves gambling. He loves having a good time. Taking Sir Charles Barkley for my second pick. Interesting. (laughs) For my third pick, I'm taking a guy in his old age who just loves to have fun and play pranks on people. I'm taking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Did you guys watch that that reel I sent you? Uh, <laughs> sure. So so Ar- so Arnold, I'm I'm told you don't have a phone. Why would I need a phone? I have an iPad. I have FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> why why do I need a phone? <laughs> Only in emergency I talk on phone. Otherwise FaceTime. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, your draft is very interesting. Oh, it's going to be interesting. We're in Vegas, man. Okay. It's going to be interesting. In all right. All right. Cool. Uh, next up, who I'm bringing in, because Adam Sandler, Wolf Barrel, they're hilarious. They're they're getting a little... I, I, need, I need a little bit more younger, funny energy. So I'm going to bring uh, Ryan Reynolds into the mix as well. Mm. 
Interesting. Breaking out the tequila. Now, with my fun weekend going on, me, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, I could keep it going and keep taking all the Boston people, you know, Mark Wahlberg, Julian Edelman, Bill Belichick, maybe. I could get them all coming. But I need somebody a little more humble, more down to earth, somebody who's going to keep, uh, you know, make sure our egos don't get too high while we're partying, you know, somebody who can keep us in check. So I'm going to take uh, Mr. Keanu Reeves now to come join my party. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Keanu! <laughs> All right. Next up, <clears throat> so got Matt Damon, who's my right hand guy. I've got my eccentric guy in Mr. Nicholas Cage. And now I need the guy that I know I need to keep an eye on at all times. I need the guy who will potentially get lost, who will assault a police officer in some weird way, will steal a purse because he needs beer money. What, what you name it, they'll do it. All of a sudden, you look over, they're on a roof. I don't know. I am going to take Mr. Gary Busey oh, as, as, oh. My, as my third pick. <laughs> Gary Busey, you are gonna Gar- go to jail. <laughs> Gary Busey, Gary Busey, and last but certainly not least, I need someone who is going to know the best spots in town. I need a little bit of young blood. Uh, to to take us to the right clubs, the right places, be plugged in with the right people, uh, know how to get us into some back room areas, some VIP stuff. But he also needs to be a certain amount of cool. And so my for my young blood, I'm gonna take Mr. Pete Davidson. <laughs> oh boy, oh, you are so man. ending up in jail. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so to recap, my. My uh, group of guys to hang Poor out in Matt Vegas Damon. for the weekend. <laughs> Mr. Matt Damon, <laughs> Nicholas Cage, Gary Busey, and Pete Davidson. Oh my God. Matt <laughs> Damon is going to be murdered way overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> by Gary Busey. All right. So to end my weekend now, I want to take an older fella, more like a father figure, who can still have fun, still down to earth, still humble, but he'll give us wisdom so we make make it through. We don't get too crazy. So it's going to be me and Brady. Rob Gronkowski is going to be there, life of the party. Keanu Reeves is there to have fun, keep it grounded, but also for security protection. Um and then I'm going to take John Goodman now. He's going to be coming to this party. <laughs> Mr. John Goodman himself, the father figure. You recap that one, John? He just went through all of them. He just did it all. Oh, it was it was Tom Brady, pause. Rob Gronkowski, Keanu there Reeves, was just John that, Goodman. Okay, there was just a long, awkward pause. I, I didn't remember if you recapped him or was it Jay waiting again? Wow. Was Jay waiting again? Wow. I guess I keep forgetting them after John. Anyways. Uh, well, Are you sure that didn't uh, arch didn't fall on your head and not your foot? <laughs> oh, man. No kidding. So, with my first pick, I took Adam Sandler. Then I took Will Ferrell. And then I took Ryan Reynolds. And you guys keep talking about having a daddy figure present. Well, there's only one daddy figure I want to hang out with. And that's Mr. Pedro Pascal. <laughs> so he's going to join my party as well. We're going to have a great time. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to Vegas to have a good time. That's my whole point. It's going to be a weekend. Is any of your guys gamble, below 70? <laughs> I, that's what I'm wondering. Like, yeah, Brian, all your people. Yeah. Barkley is. He's going to get all this senior discount. Barkley the has the mind party. of a 90-year-old. Listen, listen, I think of these guys like I think of my dad, and my dad is fun to party with. So I always have a great time with dad. These guys are right there with them. Charles they love is to only live 60. it up at their old life. They don't slow down. There you go. See? Uh, so I got... <laughs> Bill Murray, who's just the life of the party wherever he goes, make us laugh. Charles Barkley, who's going to gamble all night, uh, have a great time. Arnold Schwarzenegger, playing pranks on everybody, smoking his cigars, having a good time. And my last pick, I'm going to take another guy that's a little older, <laughs> but also <laughs> loves to have a good time, and that's John Daly. 
and take John Daly for my last pick. John Daly? Who? Right. The golfer. John Daly. John the Daly. Golfer? Oh man, he's a part. He drinks. He drinks beer and smokes cigarettes during the tour. Like he's the best guy <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that's what qualifies him to be the best. <laughs> uh, if you're going to Vegas to have a good time, yeah, that's who you want. Trust me, our wow. listeners will know. When our listeners hear this draft, they're going to say, "Holy cow, Ryan's team blew everybody out of the water." His his Vegas weekend sounds like a blast. <laughs> wow. Except for, except for your whole team needs adult diapers to make it through the night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that you guys you like going, don't have father figures. Are you? You guys don't have fun father figures to hang out with and realize how fun old people can be. But they are great when they well, want to have a good time. They let loose dead, and have fun. So that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some oh. honorable mentions here because I got several on my list. I got a lot of younger people on my list here. Um, I'll throw oh, out. Let's a few, hear them. I'll throw out a few real quick here. Um, Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> Everybody on here is probably older than I am, just about. Oh, except for if he dies, one. he dies. Um, I had uh, uh, Michael Jordan very high in my list. I have Kevin Hart. That would be a blast. Uh, and I'll throw uh, two more quick ones out there. Uh, Andy Sandberg and the all-time father figure, Mr. Tom Hanks. Hmm. That'd be fun. Hmm. I feel like Tom Hanks is going to ruin the party. Like, you want to try to do something fun, and he's going to be like, well, come in. Or it would be like in the uh, right mood. Neil Patrick Harris and Harold and Kumar were just completely crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got some cocaine, guys. Woo! Only two other Jay, names I mentions. had on my list was uh, Denzel Washington and Kevin Bacon. That was the only other two names I wrote down. Ooh, mm, Kevin Bacon nice. would be fun. Yeah. If it was a boy dance party draft, it would have been Kevin Bacon. <clears throat> uh, other names I had on my list, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, but I feel like he's just going to want to hang out with all the young girls too much. <laughs> um, Johnny Depp. I feel like Johnny Depp would be a real fun time, but again, he he he's he goes with that Nick Gage character. Like You just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and then Brad Pitt and Sylvester Stallone. That'd be a fun time. Oh, hmm. yeah. Brad Pitt would be great. <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to stop staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right. Hey. Um, <clears throat> I got a couple here. Um, first one uh, is Liam Neeson, because I feel like I would really enjoy listening to him tell stories, and he's he's kind of got that tough guy figure to him. Um not at all for political reasons, but Donald Trump, just because I'd like to see how he behaves in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> George um, Bush would be a fun one. George W. Bush would be a fun one to go to Vegas with. Yeah. <laughs> you see any Al Qaeda's around here? Um, <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh, next Let's one go play is. The slots. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is Tom Cruise because I feel like he'd be trying to one up everybody all night long. All night long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think you can jump high? Well, let me wa- watch me jump high. <laughs> He'll be running up and down the street. Don't run next to me. <laughs> um, They'll be like, uh, "Hey, you got that drink fast? I can get it faster. <laughs> get it faster." <laughs> what, um, what what night do you think would end worse, one. Michael's team that he has assembled? Or if you took the last four <laughs> U.S. presidents with you to Vegas, which which night would be worse? <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Then next, I have Christopher Walken. I don't need to say anything else there. Um, and then last but not least, I can't tell you why this guy was on my list, but there was just there was something pulling me to his name. Just because I don't know if he would be a father figure. I don't know if he'd party hard. I don't know if he'd be full of good old timer stories. I don't know. But I, I put Nick Nolte on my list just because it felt right. Well, you had Gary Busey. You had Gary Busey on there. It's only natural you put Nick Nolte on there. Yeah, yeah. So those were my honorable mentions. Nice, nice. Very nice. Mm. 
All right. Well, that's it. Again, don't Oh, and we are going to Vegas, so you can't you can't bring up Vegas and not bring up Charlie Sheen. That would probably be a wild time. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I don't want to get I don't want to get AIDS. <laughs> All right, that's it for tonight. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow us on our YouTube. Till next time, peace. We out of here. Thanks for joining us today on The Manchild Chronicles. You can find us on your favorite social media platforms at The Manchild Chronicles. Don't forget to join us every Friday for a new episode. That's all for now. See you next time.